Cotton is down to a quarter a pound and you're busted. Sales are gone, your business is slumping, and you're frustrated. The sales reps you have right now can't close a deal. It seems like they can't even close an open door. But only, only if you could have Jen. She is the top seller at your competitor, Lame Corp. Ah, that would be the day. But then all of a sudden, you get a text message. It's Dave from the trade show. He just pointed out that he heard that Jen wants to leave. Dream come true. Just imagine it. She will bring a whole list of clients, people who will buy. I will be closing deals left and right. Our whole company will be making money. And soon I would have to hire more people and grow our expansion. Yes, Jen is the answer. Money, money, money. But really, is this the right move? Is Jen the right person to bring in? Will she really bring the business? Before you make the hiring decision, I want you to listen to this episode. This episode is brought to you in part by Sales Success Summit. If you're a sales rep and you're looking for ways to improve your skills, you want to learn from the top 1% of sellers, you need to attend Sales Success Summit. The event is held this year, October 14th through 15th in Austin, Texas. To find more information, visit the show notes or go to top1summit.com. Again, top1summit.com. This episode is also brought to you in part by TSE Certified Sales Training Program. Learn how to find more ideal customers, build stronger value, close more deals. There are 12 modules available in the program. The first two modules are absolutely free. Test them out for yourself. Go to the salesevangelist.com slash free course. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, as you heard in a teaser, we're going to talk about Jen, this elusive unicorn of a sales rep that if if you get a chance to bring her in, she's going to turn your company around. She's going to bring a book of business and oh my goodness, mm, 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 ching to the ching to ching to ching ching all the way to the bank. Now, as a top performing sales rep, I've had the opportunity to be lured by other companies before. And sometimes I was the gen in the eyes of the people that was trying to bring me on. And I'm going to tell you about my experience, but also I'm going to point out seven things that you need to be aware of. These can help you in this situation because, I mean, sometimes we all feel that we can put our eggs in one basket and we feel that, uh, you know, especially when you get desperate, when you need the money, when you need the income, you need the, the pipeline and you feel that your current salespeople aren't doing it too well. You want to go to get people who can. And sometimes it is. Let's go find that really amazing seller from our competitor and bring them in. I mean, what really can go wrong? Well, the first thing I want to point out is why are they leaving or why would they leave the current competitor to come work for your company? Now, you can say all the nice, pretty stuff like we're great. We have an awesome 401k plan. We have a a fantastic comp plan. And you know what? Our culture is just fantastic. She is going to come here. If you're not making tons of money right now, why do you think that a top seller is going to leave something that's great to come to your organization? Or if she is leaving the competitor, why in the world is she leaving a good company, a place where she's making good money? Is she really just a problem child in disguise? Are you willing to take that on? You need to find out the reason first. The second thing you need to ask yourself is, what did she do for the competitor? So let me give you an example. In Mike Weinberg's book, The Sales Management Simplified, awesome book. Again, you can find it on Audible. But one of the things that Mike point out in his book, especially when you're going through a situation like this, you need to really consider, did the salesperson sell at their last company? Were they tasked to go out and find their own opportunities? Or because they were quote unquote good and they do do a decent job, that that person just got the best leads from the company. They kind of just cherry picked and gave them the easy stuff, gave them the things that would cause them just to close. When, on the other hand, they don't like prospecting. And in your company, they're going to have to prospect. They don't have a 
they're not going to have that source of constant leads coming in. If that's the case, you need to really, really, really make sure that is clear. Are they account managers? Are they just closers? Or are they required to do some farming as well as close their own deals? You want to make sure that it's going to be a good match. If that person, because the last thing you want is to bring that person over who is They hate prospecting to come into your organization and now for three months they're not doing anything and you realize it's because they never had the prospect before and they're having a tough time doing that. It's like taking two different pieces of a puzzle or trying to put them together. It will not work ever, ever work. It may look like it could work, but when you put those pieces into this puzzle or put that piece into this plug, it just won't fit. Now, one of the big things that lure managers and sales leaders in situations like this is they think about the number of opportunities that they will generate or the business that they can steal from the competitor. Let's understand that first off. In your industry, are people in agreements and are these agreements long term? If that's the case, the likelihood of that person leaving because of an awesome sales rep, quote unquote, the unicorn named Jen, is that really likely that they're going to break a contract with Lane Corp? and spend thousands of dollars just to come to your company because Jen is now there. Obviously, you'll get a few of them who will come because Jen is now with your company and their contract is coming to an end and she sweet-talked them to sign with you. But what about the other rest, the 90% who are in a long-term agreement and they won't expire for another year or six months or eight months? You're going to have to wait for Jen to massage those before they can come over. Do you have the time and patience for that? Because you lured her in with some pretty, pretty big money. You need to see a return pretty quickly. But if this is the case, let's talk to her. Let's be upfront and figure out how much business can she imagine that she could bring over. I mean, realistic numbers. Let's not go and do some pipeline fakery. We want to figure out, can you really convince these these clients to come to Awesome Company and to leave Lane Corp? What are the chances right now? What's the agreement structure like? Do you have a non-compete? All of these things are things that you need to consider before you jump in and say, yes, bring Jen on board. I had a guy that I work with, the name was Tom, and I've spoken about him on past episodes. And he was one of those individuals and that, you know, people, wherever he went, his client would go with them as well. But the problem was it didn't always happen right away because these clients were in long-term agreements. So it took months and sometimes years. People love Tom. And every so often he would bring a couple business, a couple new clients from one industry or from one uh, past company to the current company. And it did work in a small sense, but it wasn't like what the leadership thought. They they thought they were going to get hundreds of millions of dollars. Tom did his best. And you know what? It was just a simple fact that no matter what, how great of a unicorn someone is, they still can't just take people away from current business. Sometimes it's even people don't like to change and it's kind of harder to do that. It's better to stay with the known devil than to go with someone else that you don't know. The next thing you need to consider, number four, is the culture. Can she fit with your culture, with the company? Are your sales team going to like her? Because, hey, Jen was stealing business from them before. All of a sudden, we need to welcome her with open arms and look at her as the savior. Mm, Maybe a challenge. Can she fit with the way you guys do business? Does she understand your operation? Is it the same as the way your competitor did it? More than likely not. Is she going to understand the the procedures that you guys have in place? And is she going to be willing to follow them? Or she's going to see herself as the unicorn, as the, the chosen one, and do her own thing. You need to make sure that they are a fit with the way that you guys do business. What if she doesn't work out? How much time are you going to give her? When do you need to see the return? If you have all these things so far in place and you have adult conversation, then you need to make sure you have that plan as well in case she does not work out. Are you going to be willing to cut your losses and move on? Some people just keep on going with tossing good money at something bad. And that's the last thing you want to do. Make sure you have a contingency plan in case Jen does not work out. Now, think about this. Instead of Jen, does it make sense to perhaps bring somebody else? Maybe they're not the top producer at a previous company. Maybe they're not the unicorn, but maybe just getting someone with industry experience, maybe they won't be as expensive as Jen and they don't have tons of business that they can bring. However, they can come and understand how to operate already and be successful. Or perhaps you want to spend twice as much money on Jen when this person could produce just as much as Jen because they have the same industry experience, they fit with your culture, and with the proper coaching, come on, they could produce. The final thing that I would share with you is number seven, is that you need to make sure that you interview them. Fully vet them just as much as you would vet this new prospect. Let's say you you did find a, a really good seller, and 
you know, he worked in the same industry and all of a sudden he is looking for a great job, a, a new company to go to. And he is not the top producer leaving the competitor with a book of business. However, he does have a solid track record and can perform well. You would interview and grill him to make sure he can do the job because Jen comes with this, you know, this folklore about her already. You kind of skip over the interview questions. You you don't really listen to your team and to some of the other executives. You, you really want to go with your gut decision on this one. And you feel Jen is, is the person that's going to save the organization. So you, you cut corners. And we know what happened when you cut corners in sales. The deal won't close or it won't be a right close. You'll have problems. That customer will churn. Make sure to try to disqualify Jen just as much as you want her. Try to encourage her not to come to your organization with your interview. And if you're able to really vet that person and they're really, uh, you know, really excited, elated to come and work for you and they can do all of these things up above, man, you found a great, awesome unicorn. But in my experience, the unicorns don't exist. Well, maybe few and far between. I was lured as a unicorn once to go into a company, a startup to help save that company because I was going to bring a big, a big bulk of business. At least that's what the leadership thought. We never had that conversation in an interview too much. He just asked if you had some experience working in the nursing home industry. And I said, yes. And then he thought that maybe that meant I was going to bring a ton of new business. Now, quickly, it led down to the path where I did not bring that book of business. And long story short, the company was in dire situation and I didn't vet them out properly already. And it was a Hail Mary shot at the very end and it didn't work out. The company eventually closed their doors. In my experience, I would make sure I vet any unicorn. Maybe, maybe it's just going to be like we talked about in the sixth point of just finding someone else in the industry who is a good seller, who could do the job, understand the industry, and you can coach into your own unicorn. Build them up right. Hope this helped you today. As you know, as always, my big goal is to help you to find more ideal customers, build stronger value, close more deals. I want you guys to make sure you improve. Check out my friends over at the Sales Success Summit. Also, check out TSC Certified Sales Training Program. Would love to have you join. Maybe we can help you to develop some of your own internal unicorns. But most importantly, my goal is to help you and encourage you each and every single day to go out and do big things. Stay tuned for a scene from our next episode. But I've also worked with sales professionals that don't have clarity about their own work and where they work. So what I encourage them to do is to create clarity by taking ownership and they become the leader. So even though you have a manager or even though you have a positioned leader, sometimes those people don't lead in the way that you need them to lead you. So it's up to you to say to that leader, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I need help with. And here's where I need your support. Hey, thank you so much for checking out our show today. I truly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to find podcasts. Show your friends, your colleagues how they can subscribe. That would be truly appreciated. This month is my birthday. It would be an awesome gift. Our show today was produced by myself and the Sales Podcast Network. It was edited and mixed together by the one and only Jershon O'Bale. Our guest correspondence is May Marr. Our amazing artworks are created by Dessen. Our show note were created by Rael. And our podcast production manager is Mrs. Shannon Rasmussen. You can find audio credits in each of our show notes. And as always, I am your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. Sales Podcast Network.